Hey, and welcome back to another video. We're gonna keep talking about the Python collections module. In particular, today we're gonna talk about the default dict. So let's get started and dive right in. We're gonna cover off handling missing keys in style today. And as cheeky as this sounds, it's actually pretty incredible what you can do with the default dictionary here. So in terms of what you're gonna get out of this video, we're gonna talk about what the default dict is, how you can use it to easily construct dictionaries how it handles missing keys for you, and how to create different default dictionaries with integers, with floats, and lists. And we're gonna talk through some really useful examples of how you can actually put this to use. So let's start off with what the default dictionary is. And the best way to do that is to load it, create one, and sort of explore some of its attributes. So let's do just that. So the way that you can import it is uh, from the collections module, we're gonna bring in uh, the default dict here. So it's in lowercase because it's actually a factory function. It's not a class like some of the other pieces in the collections module. So what we can do here is actually create a new one. We'll call it just data. I'm gonna spell this correctly. And we're not gonna pass in anything right now. So let's print out data following this. We can see right away, our data object is now default dict with this cryptic none keyword here and this empty dictionary. So before we explore this any further, let's take a look at how the, what the type of this is. We can take a further look at how it's subclassed to a regular dictionary as well. So let's print out type of data. We can see it's part of the collections library. It's a default dict object. So now, because it has dict in the title, is it related to a dictionary? The answer is yes. We can confirm this uh, by using the isSubclass method here. So we're gonna pass in default dict here and a regular dictionary here. So what this function's doing is it's asking, is this uh, class here a subclass of the second argument? So when we run this, we get back that it's true. So the default dict belongs to a dictionary. However, it overrides some of the key methods and arguments in it, um, and it really extends upon them as well. So now to really understand the value of a default dict is we need to understand how regular dictionaries handle missing keys. So let's imagine that we're running a computer business and we have some inventory. We're just getting started. We only have a single computer. We have two TVs and one phone gonna be a very small store, but bear with me. So now imagine that we've just placed another order, we've gotten another phone uh, that we wanna be able to access. So we can access that um, key of phone and be able to access the inventory of it by accessing the key. So how does this work? Uh, it pulls up the corresponding key here and returns the value for it. Now, if we wanted to modify it, Remember, I said we received a new shipment, we have one more phone in our store, we can actually pass in this plus equals one augmented assignment operator, and then it should increment the value of phones by one. So when we now print out inventory, we can see, okay, our store has two phones. Now, what happens if we get this massive shipment of VCRs? VCRs, gonna make a comeback. If we wanted to replicate this example here, so if we just wanted to write, okay, um, that we have zero, we wanna have one, what happens now? Well, we get this key error because our dictionary doesn't actually have uh, VCRs in it. So the way that we need to do this is actually by using um, an if else block or a try except statement. So we can write if VCR in inventory, meaning that the key exists in that dictionary, then inventory VCR plus equals one, else we want to return that the inventory of VCR is equals to one. So now when we access the inventory, we can see that the VCR has been safely added here. Now, this works, it's fine but it's only fine. It's not exactly great. It's a little messy. It 
it's a little unintuitive in terms of what you actually are trying to accomplish. And you may look back on this code thinking, okay, why did I write this? And this is where the default dictionary actually comes into play. So let's explore this a little bit deeper. And I realize I have a, a typo here. So um, the default dict is actually a factory function that does two main things. It does more than that, but it does these two very key things. It overrides this missing method. And so this is what caused that error in the first place. So if an item isn't there, it doesn't raise that key error that we saw. It also adds this instantiation variable default factory. And so this instantiates new key value pairs for items that don't actually exist. So earlier when we created our first default dict, we didn't pass in anything. And we have this really cryptic none word here. So the way that we create these is actually by instantiating that um, factory function that allows us to instantiate new key value pairs using a specific kind of value. So let's take a look at how we can recreate our dictionary of inventory here as a factory function. So the way that we can do this is by creating, I'll just call it um, default dict here, and we'll create a default dict and we're gonna pass in int here. Now, we're, this is technically the callable for an integer. So think of it if we wanted to create an empty integer here, we would pass an int with the two parentheses. Now, because we're, we only wanna pass in the callable, we don't actually wanna call the function directly in here. We just wanna tell it to call that function when something uh, is missing. So when we run this now, and let's actually print out what our inventory default dict looks like. So we can see that this uh, none word has been replaced by int now. So when a key doesn't exist, it instantiates an empty integer meaning zero. So this is great. So let's actually take a look at how we can now handle this example that we, we had before where we needed to write this if else block. Um, all right, so let's imagine that we got our shipment of VCRs and remember this dictionary right now, this default dictionary is empty. So with the normal dictionary, if we were to try to use the augmented assignment operator to just add our new inventory to it, it would throw a key error. However, let's see what happens when we try to add um, a value here for a key that doesn't exist. So we'll put in VCRs and we'll do plus equals 100. We can see that this worked. And now let's take a look at what our dictionary actually looks like. We can see that this was added without throwing a key error, which is really awesome. Okay, so now that you know how to create default dicts, let's take a look at some other ways in which we can use them. So one of the great ways in which you can use them is actually to group different items. So the way that uh, what we wanna actually accomplish here is be able to create a dictionary of this dictionary where it looks at the location of our different users and creates a key of the different locations and a list of all the users that belong to that location. So what we want to be able to create is say a key of Toronto where we have Nick and Kate in there, then a key of London that has a list as its value containing Evan and so on. So let's take a look at how we would do this first without a default dict. We would need to use that if else block again. So first let's create this, um, we'll call this locations old. We'll create an empty dictionary here. And then we'll say for uh, person and location and users items, if location in locations old, meaning that that key actually exists, then what we wanna do is um, append that person to that location. So we wanna say locations old location dot append, and we're gonna pass in the person here. Uh, if that location doesn't exist, we're gonna create a new key value pair where the key is the location and the value is a list containing that person. So we're gonna write locations old location. And in this case, we're gonna pass in a list of 
person. So let's see what this looks like. And we can see that it worked. Now, this is already quite a bit messier than the example that we did before. It's also not really the most intuitive in my opinion, but it worked. So let's see how we can actually do this with a default dictionary. So in this case, we're gonna create locations and we're gonna say it's a default dict. And in this case, we're gonna pass in list here as our callable. So whenever a key value pair doesn't exist, it's going to instantiate it with an empty list. So now that we have this empty list, we don't actually need to run this else block here. We can directly run this append method, which also means we don't need to embed it all in an if else statement. So we can actually just say for person and location in users.items. And now all we need to do is say locations, location. dot append person. And when we print this out, we're gonna get the exact same thing here, which is really cool. It makes the code so much cleaner, makes it a lot easier to write. You don't necessarily, I mean, you should explain what you're doing with a comment, but it's a lot more intuitive. Now, as our last example of how to use the default dict, let's take a look at how we can actually aggregate items. And so this is, a little bit similar to what we did in our first example with our inventory. However, here we're gonna use floats just to look at that third callable that we can pass in. So I'm not gonna go through the entire process of writing the, the for if else statement that we would do with a regular dictionary. We're gonna jump right into the uh, advanced default dict mode here and we're gonna call this aggregate. And we're gonna declare a new default dict it's gonna be a float. So if a key value pair doesn't exist, it's gonna create the key and an empty float, meaning 0.0, .0 um, for us. And so we can just directly add to it. So we're gonna write for, since we don't really care about the month, we'll just call it an underscore. We'll call it item and amount and sales. And we're gonna say aggregate item plus equals amount. So now let's print out aggregate here and I needed to run this line of code here first and here we go. So we've been able to successfully loop over each of these tuples here. Say we pulled them from a database. Uh, we're able to loop over them, aggregate values directly by their type or by their category uh, and add these different values together. Uh, so it works for floats, it works for integers, it works for lists. So that brings us to the end of today's tutorial. I really hope that you learned something new. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, it really helps me out. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.